So in this video, we will continue to study how to translate uh, statements uh, from C to IR. So the first topic we are going to look into is the for statement. So for example, we have a for loop like this. Uh, let's say we have a body here and the initializer here and the increment uh, statement here and the and the the increment I mean oh, I'm sorry it is the condition statement I mean conditional expression and this is the the increment statement and this is the inner body of the uh, for loop and how to translate this uh, C statement, for statement, into IR. So, as we discussed in the previous video, we are going to create uh, four new blocks. Um, block for block for the initializer. And the second block is for the uh, condition. And the third block is for increment. And the, the, the first block is for the body. So we are going to create uh, four new blocks. And also we are going to create the uh, block for continuation uh, after this. After this follow, we are going to continue to translate the remaining statement. So we have to create a block for a new block for that continuation. So yeah, we are going to create uh, five new blocks here. So let's see how to do that uh, uh, more concretely. So we are going to look into the for statement and and initialize uh, block by inserting the existing con uh, current uh, block as uh, committed. So we are going to commit the current block by inserting. Oh, let's create a new block which is called BID init. Uh, so this is basically BID init. We're going to create a new block and we are going to conclude the current block by uh, jumping to the new init block. So and uh, that, that's basically doing that. We are going to replace the current context. So the current context is now becoming an empty context with a BID, BID in it. And we're going to conclude the current block by jumping to the newly created BID in it. And we enter a scope uh, because we are inside a full loop. So, so this integer uh, declaration in the initializer it's only visible uh, in the this for loop, so we need to create a new scope here. Okay, then we are going to create an uh, initializer here. So let's see what is doing this. So this is an initializing, for example, integer i equals zero inside the for loop, and if this is an expression or empty, we are going to just translate uh, as a uh, but uh, we are going to just uh, add some instructions to calculate the value here. And if it is a declaration, we are, then we are going to add a declaration inside a function as we discussed in the previous video. So this translate, translate decal is not only used in this for loop, but also in other occasions as well. So we already discussed how it is done in the previous video, so we are going to skip this. Okay, so this is basically executing the code there, I mean, translating the code for initializer into the initializer block. So that's what is done in this uh, function. Okay, after this, uh, we are going to jump to the condition block. So this is uh, named bid con. And probably this is named PID increment. 
and then this is bid body and this is bid count okay let's and we are going we are about to create a new block uh, whose block id is bid count so yeah we create a new block id here and insert the new block and conclude the current block for the initializer by saying that oh you have to just jump to the bid count uh, which is the conditional block and and this is the such a condition here and after this oh uh, this is named bid step sorry for confusion okay after this we are going to create uh, three new blocks here uh, body step and end okay so okay and you're going to oh this is not bid count this is bid end okay that's good okay after translating uh, the initializer we are about to translate the condition block here uh, then if so the the logic is here like this you translate the the condition and if the value is true then you're 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 going to jump to the body so executing a if the condition is false you're going to jump to the continuation uh, which is executing b so basically this is doing that this is translating the condition here of condition for the full for statement and it is jumping to either bid body or bid end uh, which is the block for the body a or block for the continuation b uh, depending on the value of this uh, condition here so let's look at what what's going on here so in the c, c syntax the condition can be empty so and in this case we are going to jump to uh, uh, just the 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 first uh, bid uh, which is named bid then here uh, but it is instantiated with the bid body at the at the time of the invocation of this function so oh i'm sorry so if this is the condition is something then we are going to translate it as a condition uh, with uh, this the the true branch and the false branch or then branch or as branch or in a more specifically a bid body uh, when instantiated uh, with uh, the caller and or bid end otherwise if the condition is empty so this is very much possible if uh, written like this then we are not checking the condition and we are always jumping to the uh, in uh, the internal body in this case so if it is the case we are just jumping to the 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 body or then uh, bid then here okay so and in, in the translate condition uh, condition is just an expression and we are just uh, going to translate the expression here uh, as an R value uh, because we are not going to uh, assign a value to this uh, variable but we are just investigating the value and whether it is 0 or not I mean 0 or 1 so we are just calculating the value by translating expression R value and we are going to implicitly typecasting to a boolean uh, so okay so let's see the co uh, let's say that the code is like this uh, I this is not uh, uh, this condition is not boolean right so it is uh, rather an integer so in order to check whether this is um, this is uh, worse continuing the iteration or worse breaking the iteration uh, we are going to uh, translate I mean typecast uh, this integer to boolean so this function translate uh, typecast boolean is doing that in our design so so even 
this can be a float here like this. So you need to typecast uh, the condition here into a boolean uh, from any type. So so please implement it as the yeah accordingly. Okay, and now we are going to insert a conditional block, conditional jump, and this condition is typecasted a condition that was uh, evaluated with uh, the expression. And if it is true, we are going to jump to the M branch or BID body. Otherwise, we are going to jump to the else branch, uh, which is the uh, BID end here. So this is how condition is translated in the in the uh, in our model code. Okay, let's go back to the context. Okay, so so we were translating the first segment, and we translated a condition here like this. So depending on the value of the condition, we either jump to the body or jump to the uh, con continuation. So so far so good. Okay, and we are going to translate body first uh, because uh, the <coughs> the end or continuation is going to be dealt with uh, by the caller of this uh, function. And we in here we are going to translate body and the increment. And we enter <coughs> another scope here uh, because inside of all loop. We have another scope uh, consisting of these two uh, brackets like this. Okay, so if there is a declaration like this, then we cannot refer x inside this uh, condition here. Uh, not possible. So this x should not be uh, referenced inside this. Uh, all of segments. So that's the reason why we are creating another scope for the body. And now we are creating a context for the uh, body and we are translating this body statement and and yeah with the yeah we are translating the body in in this uh, new context that is starting from the BID that uh, BID body. So this is basically block ID for your information. And so this is uh, what is interesting about uh, the for loop or while loop or do while in C. So in for loop, let's say that we have a continue and we have a break, right? It is possible to write uh, such a code. And this BID step and BID end is signifying uh, to which block we are going to jump jump when uh, we meet that is continue or black block statement uh, break statement. So this BID step, uh, which will be translated later, uh, is the block ID for the the con the continuation, right? So if this for loop is continued, then we are going to execute this um, increment operation first, and then uh, then evaluate the condition here. So that's the reason why when we meet continue here, we we are going to jump to uh, uh, plus plus i. And furthermore, if we meet break, we are going to jump to uh, the block b here. So. This is BID uh, step, and this is BID end. And that's the reason why we are going to put a BID step and BID end for this uh, statement. So that's the, this, this, uh, the, so this was named BID continue in the function here. So yeah, that is the meaning of such a, uh, such two block IDs in the signature of this function. 
So <clears throat> the BID continue is the block ID to jump to uh, when you meet continue. And BID break is the block ID to jump to uh, when you break the <clears throat> in the current context. Okay, let's let's move on to the let's move on to the translation. Okay, in the translation of this body, we use this BID step and BID end as a BID continue and BID uh, break. So that's how it was uh, used in the translation. And after translating the body, uh, before moving on, you can see that uh, thanks to the recursion, you don't need to uh, you don't need to discuss any details of uh, this in internal body uh, at this point of time. You just recurse uh, into the same function with a body. Uh, that's all. That's all the details you need to know in the translation of the for loop uh, of the uh, the body of the for loop here. And we're going to exit the scope for the body uh, because we started a new scope for the body, so we exit it. So recall that this start scope and exit scope uh, is creating and destroying a layer inside a symbolic table. And after this, we are going to jump to the uh, the the step or plus plus i block. So. This context for the body is concluded, uh, and at the end of this body, we are going to jump to the step. And this is the code for the step. Uh, we just translate the step as an R value because we are not interested in uh, assigning value to this expression. So we are just evaluating this uh, value. So we are going to translate this expression as an R value. And, and we unconditionally jump to the, uh, the condition block. So after, after executing plus plus i, we are going to check whether i is less than 10 or, uh, 10 or not. So that's the reason why uh, in this uh, step block, we are going to jump to the uh, uh, the condition block. And we are exiting the scope for the entire entire for loop. So the for loops uh, scope is beginning here. So there are two scopes, nested scopes. So no, no. So, so this is matching with the axis scope we just saw. So this is creating a new scope for the entire for loop. Uh, because the so such a declaration should not be visible uh, here. So that's the reason why we create a new block for uh, for this uh, for loop itself, and later we created a new block for the. Uh, this uh, brackets here. So we have two nested uh, uh, block uh, scopes uh, for this for loop, and that's the reason why we are exiting the scope here. We are exiting the scope for the entire uh, for loop, and we are just going to return. So we call that uh, the the context. Okay. Okay, the context itself is replaced with a new context with a BID end, uh, which is for the continuation. And that's the reason why we can just return from this function without uh, setting a context at all. So for your information, we use a new context for body and step. So the context, uh, which is a mutable variable uh, that is given to this function, uh, is Still containing, uh, still pointing to the block uh, with a BID end. So this is basically the end of the translation of a uh, for loop. So to summarize, uh, we are going to create uh, five new blocks uh, for uh, each component of the for loop, and we are going to adjust 
uh, the the jump structure. We are going to jump from the initializer to condition, for example, and condition to either body or end, and a uh, jump from body to the increment or step, or and jump step from step to the condition, etc., etc. So we express this control structure, control flow structure inside the for loop as a jump in the uh, CFG or control flow graph. We have a very similar translation strategy uh, for while loop as well. So we create a new block for uh, condition and block body and end. So it has a much simpler structure than the for loop uh, because we are not going to have uh, initializer or uh, the step uh, function. So we are trying just at the beginning of a while loop, we are just creating a new block for the condition and translate the condition uh, later. I mean, translation uh, translate the condition like this. If the while statement condition is true, then we are going to jump to the body. Otherwise, we are going to jump to the end. And we are translating the body of this while loop, and we are entering into a new scope, as we did for the for loop. And we create a new context uh, with uh, the BID body, and translate the inner body here using the BID cont and BID end as a continue and break BID uh, for the translation of this body, as just as we did for the for loop. And at the end of this translation of body, we insert a new block uh, by, I mean, we conclude the current block for the body by jumping to the uh, condition block. So think of this while loop. So depending on the value of this e, we are going to jump to jump to this a or b, and we already dealt with in the in in this line. And after executing this a, we are going back to the this block uh, that is uh, bid cond. So in bid cond, we are going to we are we are going to evaluate the value of this e so and and depending on the value we are going back to bid body or bid end and at the end of the day we are going to exit the scope for the, the that was created for this while loop and just as before the context is now a new context new empty context with the bid uh, end as the block id so we can just return from this. So the the caller of this function will continue to translate uh, b and from an. Okay, that's how it's done in while. And do while has a very similar structure here. So instead of translating the condition first, uh, because condition is uh, executed in while loop. So in do while, we are translating body first because body is trans uh, executed before a condition. So we translate body and jump to the jump to the uh, uh, we first uh, jump to the body block and enter the scope for the body and translate the statement, and exit the scope and conclude this uh, body block by jumping to the uh, condition block and in the condition block we are going to evaluate the expression and if it is true we are going to go back to the body block otherwise we are going to jump to the end block or continuation block and that's all that's uh, very similar to the while statement so we are not going to discuss in details of those uh, translation Now we have a switch statement, and it is a little bit interesting, so we're going to discuss in more details. So, okay, so 
at the beginning, we are going to translate the value of the switch uh, cases. So suppose that we have a switch case like this. Case, uh, let's say this is one, A1, and then we do A1 break. A2, two break, default, CD. Okay, so we let's say we have uh, this kind of statement, switch statement. So we allow only those from uh, those, uh, uh, I mean, well bracket switches only. So in fact, C allows uh, such a wild switch case, uh, switch statement. So, so semantics is like this. If the value of E is 3, then we execute A3 and then A4. And if we uh, the, the value of E is 4, then we execute A4 and then D because there is no break statement. So, But this is too, too wild in my opinion. So in this homework or in this uh, KCC compiler, we only allow uh, such a well bracket uh, switch cases uh, where for each case you're going to execute something and you should break from the switch cases. So the meaning of the switch case is that if E is 1, then you execute A1. If E is 2, you execute A2. Otherwise, you execute D. We only allow such a form of uh, switch cases instead of a very wild form of switch cases uh, as we described just before. Okay, now how to translate this tra switch uh, statement? We first translate the value here. We first translate the E here as an R value uh, because we are only curious about the value of this expression or rather than the pointer of this expression. So value is uh, the, the value of this E. And we are going to translate uh, for each switch body here. And this BID end is for the continuation as usual. So this is for block B, uh, block for the continuation uh, B here. And we are translate uh, for uh, the each statement of uh, each case of this state, uh, switch statement in here. Okay, and so this is for uh, this is creating a new blocks for here, and we are not still concluding the current block uh, that we translated uh, for this uh, value value e, and after. Translating this value, I mean, after calculating this R value of this uh, statement E, we are going to have a conclude this block by a switch uh, exit. So this is the value to switch, and this is the default, uh, the block for the default block, uh, which was calculated here. And we're going to add the case as the cases as the, the information for the next blocks inside this uh, the switch cases. So we this the, the, the semantics of this switch uh, is that depending on the value of this, if it matches with any cases in here, then you're going to jump to the matching uh, block. And otherwise, if no value is matching, then you're going to jump using this default uh, jump argument here. And at the end of the day, the new context will be the uh, the, the the empty block with uh, bid end as a block ID, and we can just return from here so that the rest of the con uh, the translation for b uh, can be resumed by the caller of this function. 
Okay, now let's see how this translate switch body is done here. So we are going to be given a statement and uh, we are going to be given the block ID for the continuation or end here. And we are creating a vector for cases uh, and uh, the default block, uh, block ID here. Okay, and we require, so this statement should look like this. So this statement here, which was given to this body uh, and function, is this. Starting as a bracket, and there can be many cases, and it should be ended with at the ending bracket. In other words, this should be a compound statement. Otherwise, we are just panicked because uh, such a code should be type checked and rejected by the 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 earlier translation over here. So we have a list of uh, inner uh, statements. So if we have a cases like this, let's copy copy and paste it. So these three statements are now these items. So items are these three statements like this. And we enter a scope for the compound statement because we are entering a bracket. So we are creating a new scope for that, that, is, that is corresponding to uh, this bracket. And for each item, we are going to, I mean, I, we, I trace through the items. So this and this and this are iterated. And then we are going to look into the statement. And we call on the inner function like this here. So each, first of all, it should be a labeled statement. Otherwise, uh, we are just going to panic because it's not, it is not type checked in our compiler. So the statement is like this, case one, a one break. So this is statement. So it should be labeled statement. And here the label is one and the inner body is this. And in the translation of this uh, switch cases, we create a new block uh, by allocating a new block ID. And here, we even have a nested function like this. Here, we match again, and uh, we match again, and it should be labeled statement, and we look into the label of this, and this should be the case or default. Right, so if it is the case, then we are going to uh, the I mean the switch case is like this. And we need to figure out what is this value. Uh, here this is the one, but we need to uh, systematically figure out what is the inner expression and what is the constant expression of this inner expression. So we, we try to convert this expression into constant uh, because in a case, sta uh, case statement, uh, this should be a constant. And other, uh, if we cannot, uh, I, I mean, if this is not a constant, then we just uh, bail out. Oh, you need to give me an, a constant. So this is, this program is wrong. And return such a constant here. Here. So, at this point of time, this case is some constant value if it is a case statement, or it is none if uh, it is default. Now, we assert that the inner statement is also a compound statement uh, because we want it to be something like this. 
So it is also a compound statement here. So it is starting as a bracket and ending with a bracket. So we it should be compound. And we enter scope for the compound. And then we split out the last item here and the remaining uh, the, 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 the other items here. And we assert that this uh, last item uh, should be uh, should be a break statement. So, so okay. So, we assert here that the last statement should be, uh, yeah, right here. And for the rest of uh, the 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 uh, statements a one basically, we translate uh, the body as it is uh, a compound statement. And then we conclude the block by jumping to the ending block of the switch cases. I mean, the entire switch is ending block. So after executing A1, you're going to jump to the block for the continuation B. So that's the reason why we put, uh, I mean, we conclude this block by jumping to the ending block here. And finally, we access the scope for the, uh, the the, the bracket here. So we started a scope here. We started a scope here for this. And at the end of this function, we close the scope uh, uh, that is corresponding to this ending bracket. So that's how the inner switch case is uh, translated. And let's go back to the, the color of this. Okay. So we translated the body for this, and yeah, and we have some. We and then we insert this constant case uh, constant and the bid or uh, uh, into the vector of cases. So if the meaning of this is that if the value is the same with this case constant, then you jump to the BID. The so BID is the block ID for the block that is just created for the this case. And if it is default block, then uh, we just assign this BID, the new BID, as the uh, the default, and then return. So far, so good. So we translated each switch cases and default case uh, in this folder, and then exit the scope for the entire switch cases. And so, and yeah, then uh, we treat a special case where the default is not present. And uh, if it is the case, we just jump to the a bid end. So, so, so the meaning of this is that this is uh, the vector of pair of uh, constant for and the block ID, and this is the block ID when the value is not matching with uh, any case constants. So, if it is the case, you are just going to jump to this uh, default block, and let's go back to the color of this. And finally, we are going to insert a switch case, uh, which is a block exit, uh, using this uh, value that is just calculated. And then the default uh, case, uh, and then the uh, just cases. And this is how switch is translated, basically. So it is a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, that's the reason why I show you the, the, the code for the model solution. So I like to uh, watch this video again and, and, and see what's going on for the translation of this switch and uh, mimic how we do for switch and implement uh, your own solution. And as we discussed in the GitHub issue tracker, 
uh, you can copy and paste uh, this code in this video. Uh, but and, and my purpose is that I don't want to, I don't want to you to, uh, I mean, the purpose of this uh, homework is you to learn uh, how to write a compiler, and copy copy and paste is the one of the best way to learn how to do something. So that's the reason why I allow you to copy and paste uh, this code. And please, please uh, don't copy and paste. Uh, I mean, please, I mean, please give an attention to this code so that you understand, you make sure that you understand everything. So that's what I just ask you to do. Understand the code and then copy and paste. Now we are translate the continue and break statement. So if there is a continue, then we are investigating whether there is a, a BID continue or not. And if it is present, then we are going to jump to the BID continue. Otherwise, I mean, if we break, then we just jump to the uh, BID break. So this, uh, this is easy. And we don't support a label statement, so that's the reason why we don't allow this. We only allow label statements inside switch cases, uh, which was especially treated in the code we just saw. And instead, we, in, if the label statement is appearing in elsewhere, we are just rejecting the compilation. Okay, so far we discussed the translation of every statement here. And yeah, that's pretty much everything about the translation of a statement. But in this video, we are going to also discuss uh, how to translate other things as well. Okay, so if I correctly, if I correctly, Okay, the main remaining thing to discuss is this tra translation of an R value here. Identifier is just looking up from the symbolic table, so that's not that very difficult. So constant is just a constant. Uh, and we are, we should discuss how to translate a function call and Size of is uh, not that difficult. We you just look up the type types information and uh, return return the value here. So yeah, this size of is um, statically determined. Once the type is declared, it has a fixed size. So you can deduce the size of a, a, a type in compile time. The same thing applies to a line of as well. So it is easy once you can calculate the size in a line of uh, type, uh, which is uh, thankfully uh, already provided in the skeleton code. So you can just use it uh, without implementing it. And you should be able to translate a unary and binary operator and a cast operator. So, so this translate type cast should have some logic to translate a uh, value of a tie to a b tie. And this translate unary of and binary of should uh, contain the information on how to translate, for example, a plus, minus, or and other such uh, operations. And we have a conditional expression. So in this video, we would like to uh, focus on the conditional expression and one more thing, uh, which is how to translate a function call here. So let's move on to function call first. first. So this is the call expression, uh, which is consisting of callee. So suppose that the function call is a foo x, y. So this is an expression. So, so this is not a 
statement, if it's an expression, that should, uh, I mean, the, 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 the result of this expression is the value returned from this uh, function foo. And in order to translate this, we first translate the foo here. Foo is the coli in this uh, definition here. You first calculate coli as an R value. Uh, why? Because we are going to use uh, the value of this, uh, which is meant to be a function pointer, uh, instead of assigning a value to this uh, call, uh, foo. That's the reason why we are translating uh, this expression as an R value. And call it is meant to be a function pointer. And we have a call it data type as a function pointer here. And it should be a pointer. And otherwise, we are just uh, bail out. And it, I mean, it is not, it should not only be a pointer, it should be a function pointer. And otherwise, we are just going to bail out. And the, here are the types for the return value or and the parameters of this. So this expression, in this expression, actually it is annotated with type. For example, the first argument is uh, integer. And the second argument is a float, and the return type should be, for example, boolean. So all this information is uh, recorded in this type. So return type and parameters uh, will be the integer float and boolean like this. And in the translation of a function call, we we the the first thing we did is translating a foo, and now. We need to translate arguments, for example, x and y here. We need to translate also an R value of uh, the, the parameters because, again, we are interested in, in the value of the function, uh, I mean, the value of the argument. Uh, so that's the reason why we are translating the, them as an R value. And we collect the, uh, we translate each of the values in the current context and collect it as a vector here. The argument is the vector of uh, the operands, uh, that is the value of the arguments uh, for this invocation. Now, if the, 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 the numbers mismatch, if the type says there are three arguments, but the argument has only two, for example, then we are just we are going to just bail out. Otherwise, we are going to translate uh, typecast all the arguments here from the val the the value to the parameters type here, like this. And we insert a call instruction like this. We call a callee, which is just uh, calculated uh, before, and then we set an argument. Uh, and its return type should be uh, this. The parameter types are implicitly uh, stored here uh, because every argument, which is an operand, have uh, their own type, right? and you can deduce their type from these arguments. So this is basically uh, how a function call, call is translated. So this is an instruction. And when executing this instruction, you are going to create a new, uh, new, I mean, stack frame for the callee and execute the function there and return the value uh, with the other, uh, I mean, return, return value will be uh, stored in the, in the call, callers uh, context here like this. Okay, uh, this is how a function call is uh, translated. And finally, we are going to explain how to translate a conditional expression. So a conditional expression is like this, uh, e1, e2, e3. 
if the value is e1 uh, is uh, 2 then we are going to jump to e1 and otherwise we are going to jump to uh, e3 so it is largely the same with uh, this this then e2 else e3 and it is largely the same with this Okay, so usually it, it, it is largely the same with uh, this uh, uh, the if then else, but the difference is that you can assign a value of this to this. This is possible, but this is impossible. So we need to do something more in the translation of this conditional than just uh, if then else. So everything else is largely the same with this if then else, but the there is one difference like this. So here is the difference. So in so you translate a condition just as before for the if then else and you translate a uh, then branches um, expression. For example, you translate e2 here, and you should remember the value of this e2's value. You also translate uh, e3's value as well here. And now you deduce the type of this uh, result. Uh, that should be the the super type of uh, e2 and e3. Uh, for example, if you have um, a condition, for example, uh, zero as I mean short for two int sorry seven. The type of this should be an integer uh, because integer is the type that can hold a value of short and the value of integer. So this is calculating such a type. That is the merge of a short and integer of uh, these expressions. Now we type cast the values to the merged type. For example, integer uh, is not going to be uh, typecasted, but short is typecasted into an integer to be matched with the other branch. And one more thing is that you need to you need to retrieve the value of this result, right? So then how to do this? We the how we do this is that we create a local variable for storing the value of this uh, branch and and uh, we get the pointer of this, and that is uh, pointing to the local variable here. And in the then branch, we are going to store the value of this value then to the pointer, and then go to the end, end block. And so similarly, in the else branch, we are going to store the value to the pointer, and then go to the end block. So the, 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 the block is like this. So Let's say that uh, it, it is the then branch. If it is, we have a value of x is 42. Then we store to a local variable here uh, with the value x, uh, x. In the else branch, we have another value. Uh, and we store the value here. And in the end branch, we are going to load from the t. Let's say this is a value tu, and use use u uh, from now on here. So that's the reason why we are loading from the pointer local for the local variable. So t is a local variable, 
uh, that is newly created for this uh, this conditional expression. And in the then branch, we, you calculate the value. So it can be very complex, but anyhow, you suppose that you calculate it in x, then you store x to the pointer t. In the else branch, you calculate the value of this y. Uh, anyhow, uh, this is the, uh, complicated or not. You store the value of this y to the local variable here. And then you load it, and you use u from now on here. And that's how you can retrieve the value of this conditional expression in the end branch here. I mean, in the end block here. So, in order to retrieve the value and the end result of this, you create a new local, new local variable and store the value to the local variable, and then later load it, load uh, from it, and use it. So that's the key idea of this translation of uh, conditional expression. Okay, so today we discussed uh, many aspects of this IRGen. So, so I meant to be this. The, this is the I meant that this is the last video of this IRGen. So I uh, walked through many details of this the translation of this IR. So I hope you got uh, sufficient information on how to translate a C to IR. So. I omitted a few details, uh, which I hope you can fill out. But if you have a question or you don't understand how to translate, you don't know how to translate some aspect of uh, C to IR, uh, don't hesitate to ask a question. Please do ask many questions so that we can help you as much as possible in the issue tracker.